But Rabb, meaning the fosterer or nourisher, provider. See, Allah's rububiyah is that he has sustained the heavens and earth and everything between. He has given the human beings and the animals the necessary elements for its survival. So, Rubb, Rabb, he provides, he nourishes. Just like when you were young children, your mother nourished you with milk, with food. Allah is greater than that. He provides everything for you. So, praising Allah without no conditions. We should always praise Allah without having to receive something in return. No, we praise Him unconditionally. It doesn't matter. So, alhamdulillah, if we want to be the best in something, we have to do the actions and the deeds that leads to being the best. And of course, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam teaches us how to behave as Muslims. If you want to worship and get closer to Allah, you cannot do that by yourself. You have to hide have high standards. For you children, you take tests, right? So what do you do? You prepare yourself the, the, the day before. You study. Why? You want to be the best. You want to get the best grades. You want to get the, the highest score. So you have to prepare for it. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. We as Muslims are always doing that. We're preparing for Salat, preparing for Ramadan, preparing for, you know, something that surrounds our deen, we always have to properly prepare. So, you gotta compete in a good way. Today in society, they compete in bad ways, to be better and arrogant, no. You wanna compete in good ways. Compete who will give more charity. Compete who will come to school with the best smile. Who will respect their parents and teachers and elders. This is what they call, I learned, I like to use what I learned because you gotta, you gotta keep it if you don't study it. They call this ismu tafdil, a noun of preeminence. Is a noun compared to another noun? When something's greater than, for instance, children, in math, 25 is greater than 20. So you're comparing. 25 is greater than 20. So ismu tafdil is when you compare, like Oppression is greater than slaughter. And you always have the particle, the kurufu jar, min, to compare then. So if you want to be the best Muslim, you need to have high standards. Right? The Prophet وسلم, he is that high standard in order for you to compete to be the best kind of Muslim. The Prophet وسلم, mentions it. The best of you to your families, you are the best, those who treat their family good, and the Prophet وسلم, is the best of treating his family. So how do we reach to be the best servant? How do we get closer to Allah? We do those things that the Prophet Sallallahu instructs us. We don't want to just theoretically say we're Muslim and rely just because you was raised Muslim. Some of us say we're born Muslims. But if you look at the Hadith, it doesn't say Muslim. It says Fitra. Every child is born in a state of Fitra. And his mother and father makes him a Christian or a Jew. So those who are raised Muslim, we don't want to rely just because we think we have some inheritance to the deen. That we say, well, I was born Muslim. And we're proud. But no. There's work. You have to apply Islam. You have to live Islam. You have to practice Islam. It's not truly a birthmark. Like if you're born with something like a, on your leg or something, that's a birthmark. But Islam, you can't inherit Iman except by you doing something. Iman, just because my grandfather may be sheikh, don't mean I'm going to be a sheikh. Just because some people have knowledge and he's in your family, don't mean that you're going to get it like it's some 
scratch on. You can't scratch the dean on. You have to practice. We have to apply it. We have to put it in our lives. And the children have to see a great example. And so that's why the Prophet ﷺ was on this high standard. Because we have to set those values, those high standards, so that we can get the best out of our children. To learn the deen and continue to live it in a society that's not conducive to Islamic practice. This is a struggle. Change is not an event, it's a process. It takes years to develop, and it's not something that you'll get overnight. You have many obstacles, our children have many obstacles. We have to monitor everything that they're watching, because a lot of times children pick up things that they see and they hear. And these are observational learnings that they get from society. If we're going to protect that fitrah, then we have to be able to fortress it, guard it, by allowing them to try to be involved in activities that's going to be complementary to their character. And so we have the challenges, we have challenges to face in our society, especially in this society, where everything seems that's wrong is right, and everything right is wrong. We have to allow them to be proud, but they have to see it in you as parents. You're going to tell them to make salah, and you're not making it. You're going to tell them don't smoke, but you're smoking. We have to be the mirrors of our children. So that they reflect. But again, to set the standards, like this school probably have to want to be the best, competing with the public schools. Because they think, anyway, sometimes they criticize private schools, or you're not socializing, and you know, things of that nature. So we want high standards out of our children, we have to have high standards and values ourselves. And we have that uswat and hasana, which is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is that example, you know, uswa is like a, a pattern. For instance, if you want to sew clothes, you have to cut out the pattern correctly in order to make clothes. So that's the design. So the, the character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is that that. That, that, that example that you follow. Of course, you're not going to be like him. He's, he's, he, he didn't come for you to be like him. And many of us, we get this misinterpretation, I want to be like the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi You never will be. You have to use him as an example. You'll never reach that stage. And sometimes we get, uh, uh, we have to be truthful with ourselves. The Sahaba and the Sahabiyas, they were on a great high standard. They are an example. But yet, we need to try to follow that pattern so that when it comes to being a father, we can learn that kind of example through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we want to be a leader, we look at his character. If we want to establish Islam, everybody, we have these organizations, different organizations, multiple organizations. But if it's not on that model and standard of Quran and Sunnah, then that model will fail. We have to be able to stop using old failed methods to bring about something that we see in our history. We look at the glorious history of the Sahaba and the Sahabiyas, how they impact a society based on their actions. Their character was impeccable. Why? Because they took what was in the book and they put it into their actions. It's beautiful to be a Hafiz. Alhamdulillah. But memorization or preserving something should be also incorporated in my behavior. For back in my days when we went to school, you can pass all the tests. You can get 90s and 80s. But if your character wasn't good, you got left back. Because character is important. Moral behavior, being upright. He came to perfect that. And if we're going to perfect it, then we have to follow those who perfected it. And it's very important for us as leaders and teachers to be an example for our children. To set the stage. And that stage can only be set based on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa High standard. He said, you are indeed on high standard of khulukin. Character. He was the best to do it. 
He is our example, how we should live, how we should interact. And when it comes to character, first and foremost, how to behave with Allah, having good character with Allah first. In order for you to, in, to be a better servant, you have to have a better relationship with Allah. That's good adab. That's the first courtesy to Allah. How to worship Allah. And how to, to give Allah his rights. When we stand in Salat, we shouldn't play. This is Allah's time. Now. We shouldn't joke around. All the hours that we have to do that, Allah asks us for five minutes or so. We should behave in the best of manners, the best character when it comes to worshiping Allah. And what is that? Having a khushur. Having a, a focus. Not looking in the sky. Not looking sidewards. We've got people who've been Muslim for 50 years still doing this. And the children see this. How could you have khushur if you're looking this way and that way? It's already hard enough for us to have a focus with Allah because shaitan is constantly trying to distract us and make us think of things that we wouldn't think of when we're not in Salat. It's already hard enough, so therefore we should focus where we posture. And if we're hearing the recitation, we should think of it in translation to help us focus on Allah. So how do you behave? Not with each other first. How we should behave with Allah. How we should behave as servants when we worship Him. And not take it for granted. And do things very lazy or quick. You know, Allah Akbar. And we quick going into the positions. Very lazy. We should take our time and concentrate on everything that we're saying. Because our bodies may be submitting, but it's our hearts that truly must submit. And we have to incorporate in order for us to have this good character. To be able to be the best servant, to get closer to Allah, we have to be able to stand before Him prepared. And this is Ahsan, is to pray as you see Allah, although you will never see Allah. But He sees you. That's a high standard. Of Iman. But we must try to perfect it. Because the first thing that is going to be asked of us is our salah, our prayer. We must try to perfect that. We have to have good character in standing before Allah. Because on that day, we stand. And if any of our obligatory duties is deficient, this is why we want to have profit. Because the obligatory duties is your capital. And the sunnahs, the wafl, is your profit. Because if there's something deficient in your obligatory duties, then Allah will say, do he have any profit? Any supererogatory prayers so that I can take that and replace it with the deficiency in his obligatory duties. So many of us are satisfied with just being Muslim. With five prayers a day. And just we stay there and that's it. Masjid, Ayyib, Ramadan, and that's it. This is what we're giving our children. But we should set the standards high. Because I don't think it's enough just for five prayers. I don't even know, we don't know if those are accepted. So we want to do more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the servant doesn't draw closer to me than anything that I've laid on him except the obligatory duties. And when he does the, the extra, then Allah will love him. So how you, you want to be the best? Competing to be the best? Then you have to look at who was the best. In order for us to gain excellence, we have to follow those who gained that excellence. We say this very superficially. They are example. We talk about the Sahaba, Sahabiyat. But are we incorporating that? Are we trying to really be like them or someone else as a role model in this society? Some of these uh, icon rappers and things of that nature. This is a very rap culture now coming to face the challenges of our children. It's very challenging too. They're very impressive. Very impressive. What are we going to do to counteract 
be to get the best of our, out of our children. The best of our children is setting those high standards, those values. And again, the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we can't just talk about stories and read the bedtime stories. No, we have to show them in application. We suffer. Application deficit disorder. We fail to apply. We know it theoretically. We quote it. But our actions must correlate. There's a relationship. Why did people come into Islam? Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam invited them to his banquet, his adat, mabdub. It's like inviting someone to a, a banquet and they're worthy, worthy of the invitation. So his character was his banquet. It invited the people to the high science of good character, the high science of moral character. We have to help our children to be worthy of that by living Islam. And the people in the society begin to see the character of the Muslims, we set the best standard. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have said, you are the best for mankind to evolve around. But if you look at the Muslims today, you wouldn't even see that. Who are we evolving around? Who are we trying to be like? That was in the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are the balanced ummah. We have these fancy titles in the lectures. Are we? Have introspection. Look within ourselves and be sincere and believe and, and look at ourselves. Are we really setting those high standards for ourselves and our children? Just look at the society. Look at the Muslims today. Collectively. We can brag about the numbers, the 1.3 billion. Just like in comparison. Tafdil is you're comparing comparing something with quality and quantity. It's no tough deal. When you compare something superlative, is that that now is being compared to another now in greater quality and quantity. Are we greater quality? Yeah, we talk about the numbers, maybe, but we're looking for quality. We want to compare. Are we, and how we compare, we look at the Prophet Sallallahu example, and then we look at ourselves. Look at our ummah and look at that ummah and be truthful. Are we really striving for those standards, those values that we read about? And once you can be truthful with yourself, maybe you begin to rectify it. Because change is a process, not an event. It takes time. Especially for those who converted to Islam, we're fighting with things that we live. And even the people who are raised Muslim, you have a challenge too. It's like a coming to America is a future shock. So we have challenges ahead of us. And if we use the high standard of character and implement it, then you'll see the quality along with those numbers. Inshallah. Walhamdulillah. Shalom la ilaha illallah wahduhu la sharika la shalom anna muhammadin abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The best knowledge and useful knowledge well, The best knowledge, the useful knowledge is that what? That which increases your fear of Allah. Why is this the best knowledge? This is useful knowledge. Yes, our secular education is very important, brothers and sisters. We have to get that. But do not allow Islamic knowledge to be put secondary. No. If there's, as I was speaking to the principal, alhamdulillah, this is, may Allah continue to reward this, this masjid and this school. So what we're saying is useful and beneficial knowledge is only that knowledge was, that increases your fear of Allah. Because it's taqwa that will keep us and protect us from the transgressions. Staying away from the unlawful. Increasing your knowledge in the fear of Allah. 
And it also gives you insight, increases your insight in your own faults. We look at everybody else's and we're worrying about what he's did and exposing. Look at yourself. Reflect on yourself. Introspection. It will increase. Useful knowledge increases you in the fear of the law and it gives you more insight about your own defects. Because we're trying to rise to high standards. And how do you do that? Reflecting on yourself. My defects. I'm trying to change the bad habits, the customs that I've been conditioned with. I'm still fighting that. So sometimes we think Islam blankets all of this, especially the people who come into Islam. It doesn't blanket all the problems that we came from Jahiliyyah. you got 30 years of Jahiliyyah and 2 years of Islam. You think that it's just going to go away like that? No. It's a process. So I have to look at myself. Look in the mirror. What am I doing wrong? Why am I always going to unnecessary fitna? I'm bringing problems on myself. I'm struggling with my days of Jahiliyyah. The days that has affected me most of my life. So it's a struggle for us. But you have to do something to change that condition. Never will Allah change the condition of a people until they change the condition themselves. But see, most people think that's talking about your internal. The, the scholars say the first condition is that you're already in a good state. Never will Allah change the good state, the ni'mah, that he has already put you in unless you change the ni'mah into a wrath by disobedience. So Allah has already favored us, made us servants of his, chosen Islam for us. He favored us all already. And that favor will never diminish until you change it. Meaning you may do something against what Islam tells you to do. So sometimes we're struggling with the things about ourselves, our history, our, our, our genealogy, uh, our DNA, some things, intrinsic nature, some things we just born with, some things we learn from the external world, some things we picked up, our culture and customs have uh, affected us, so we want to better ourselves. So increasing yourself in your insight and looking within your own defects. And when you look in within your own defects, you begin to see where I need to correct. The first uh, part of healing is recognizing that you have a problem. And then we can move on. When yazidu fi mi'rifatika bi ibadati rabbaka azza wa jal. And then it helps to increase us to become better worshippers. How to better worship Allah. How could I better serve my Lord and Master? We Abdullah, we are the service of Allah. And if we want to be better in something, we have to be better worshipers. We want to be better doctors and lawyers and things of that nature, good. But the priority must be set. Let me be a better worshiper first. Let me worship Allah better. Let me practice what the Prophet Sallallahu has given, inshallah. And so it will help us become better Muslims. وَيُخَلَّلُوا مِنْ رَغْبَاتِكَ فِي الدُّنْيَا And it decreases your perspective of this world. You don't want to yearn for this world when you put your priorities first. Worshipping the law, increase your fear, focus on yourself, and abstain from yearning for the dunya. All the things that distracts us from that priority. And then, وَيَزِدُوا فِي رَغْبَاتِكَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ And it increases your yearning for the hereafter. A person who strives for this world will only get it at the expense of losing the hereafter. And he who strives for the hereafter will only get it at the expense of losing this world. So our priorities must be put in place. We ask Allah to increase us in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, Amen. spiritual insight, Amen. increase us in faith, protect us from the torment of the grave and the hellfire. Amen.
protected from the signs and tribulations of Abdajah. Oh, we ask Allah to send peace and blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his family, his wives, his companions, and his true fire followers, and may Allah exalt him to the praise position that he has promised him. Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyu kayyum, la taqudu sinatu wa lanawm, lahu ma fi samawati wa fi al-awd, man daladhi yashfa'u yindahu illa bi ibni, ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim wa kalfahum, أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله هيا رسول الله هيا رسول الله هيا رفلا هيا رفلا قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله